Yeah, I'll flip on the street. I'll flip on the stream and you can see yourself underneath my plane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually still in this thing, too. There might be. It's showing 12 in there, but probably most of them are asleep or just left it open. Okay, now you've passed the 10 nautical miles behind me. Okay, so on that center display that you've got, what does it say for ground speed and true airspeed? 0.5, um, saying my ground speed is 290 knots and, or ground speed is 0.563. Ground speed is 0.563 oh. on the one that shows the map? Oh, the one that shows the map. Ground's 332 and airspeed is 357. Perfect, perfect, okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't flying faster than you. I don't want to catch up. I want to keep some separation here, so. All right, that's that's perfect. And uh, what altitude are you passing? Uh, climbing through 170. Okay, fantastic, I'm only 500 feet above you. You kind of blip in and out as far as uh, what flight simulator catches. <laughs> so I guess you're hanging around the 10 nautical mile mark or 8. Yeah, no worries. You can uh, you can increase that if you want to. I'm not gonna mess with it because I think it pauses it pauses the game when you do that. Yeah, or uh, I mean, if you want to on your autopilot uh, switch there instead of AAC, go to nav, and that that should put it on the center display, and then uh, go to 40 miles out. You should see me behind you there. ARC instead of ARC, ARC, uh, go nav, and uh, that'll give you a, uh, a central, you know, 360 degrees around you. As long as TCAS is on there, it should show me behind you. Yeah, it's showing you 20 miles back. Perfect. Or 10 miles back, sorry. I think you're, I think you're right the first time because, uh, Oh, wow, is that 20 miles? Because I've got it set, mine is set to 40, 40 miles, and it uh, shows you right in the center of the ring, so I would assume that's half of that. Okay, I've got mine set to 20, and it's got you at this, the outer ring that's marked 10. Interesting. Well, I'll try not, I'll try not to run us into <laughs> each other. You've got it programmed in for runway 8 for arrival, right? Yeah. Fantastic. I've got runway 7 right programmed in. So even if we are pretty much on top of each other, you're going to be going one way around the airport. I'm going to be going the other. Well, isn't 8 right in the middle of the airport? Uh, negative. 8 is the runway on the north side of the airport, and it's by itself. And then on the south side, there's the two runways. Okay.
Okay, so I've just hit uh, cruise altitude. Roger that, I'm passing uh, flight level 240. Yeah, so 290, is it 390 knot, 391 ground speed, 415 air. Perfect. I'm uh, maintaining 362 knots ground speed and 395 airspeed. I need to go grab one more Guinness. I'll be right back. We're back. Yeah, you're starting to fall back there, but that's, I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, that's no big deal. Alright, so the fun part's going to be our approach. That seems to always be the fun part. <laughs> yes, sir. It's bad enough at, at Los Angeles, I'm doing circles at like 8,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way I can figure out. I'll just buy myself some time to figure out what I'm doing. If I do circles, I'm not going anywhere in the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing that only Tower was on. If Center was on, he'd be giving you all kinds <laughs> of directions trying to get you in there. Yeah, I've got to find a way that it cuts out vent when when uh, traffic comes on or something. I mean, the, the first idea was a good one. If, you, if you're using speakers, just to have the headset tuned to vent sim. But because I use a headset for both, it's kind of hard to do. Yeah, that would get really confusing. Suppose after you do it a while, you kind of know what, what to expect. You can kind of half pay attention to it, but I mean, in the beginning, it's just the bad timing and vent, that's all. Uh, 
Uh, that's what Chief's been telling me the goal is, uh, if you know what the controller's supposed to be saying, I mean, you're really just listening for your call sign, and then you just acknowledge, uh, what they, what, you know, you're already expecting them to say. Okay, so to get her to do a Category 3 landing, uh, go to the performance page, yeah, go to the performance page on your FMC. All right. All right. Should say uh, should say cruise, correct? Yeah, I'm in cruise right now. And then R6 should say next phase. Yep, which takes you to descent. All right, let's skip that one as well, and let's go to the approach one. All right, I'm there. Alright, so L1 Q and H, I believe should be set to 1019er. Yeah, that's tip it's standard. Alright, that's uh th this is all Phoenix information. Temperature is one five. Now, where are you pulling the weather info Wait. for there at, from? Uh, I've got Active Sky next. Doesn't work for Steam yet, so i got to find another way. Maybe I'll use, like, the weather network or some kind of weather service. Uh, for the most part, I mean, if you can figure out what the winds are, what the temperature is, what the barometric pressure is, all that other stuff, all this stuff still needs to get entered in. Because, um, obviously, if you're on VATSIM and you're using VATSIM's weather, it's going to try to emulate this as well. Alright, so uh, under temp, uh, winds are 110 at 6. Alright, so that's the wind direction and the speed, correct? Uh, correct. There's five people watching the stream. <laughs> oh, right on. High five people. And then on the <coughs> right hand side, uh, for final up in what, R1, it should say ILS 08. It doesn't say anything there. For approach, really? Nope, there isn't one listed. Son of a. Okay, um, let's go back to our flight plan page and make sure we've got a, a arrival runway programmed in. I didn't put in the arrival runway, that's why. So it's 8 that I'm taking, correct? There we go. Okay, yeah, we're going to take, uh, well, you're going to take runway 8, I'm going to take 7, whatever the hell it was, 7 right? But yeah, you take runway 8, you take the uh, Eagle 6 arrival, and there should be no transition. Now it's entered. It looked like did you did you actually take the Eagle Six arrival? It looked like you just pressed runway eight. You're gonna want to make sure that the actual star was entered in as well. So you have a flight plan. Go runway eight. It'll, it'll say not allowed, so you have to press the right arrow button over. That'll go over to the next thing. Okay. Yeah, 
you, you're right. You're, you already had it set on ILS 8. So where you get your up and down arrows, you get the left and right arrows just next to it. Press the right arrow button over. And it's Eagle 6, right? Eagle 6, correct, sir. Okay, now it's set. Alright, beautiful. Now we can go ahead and get rid of our route discontinuity because there's no controllers to tell us otherwise. Oh, hell, since we're still on the approach page, that's fine. Yeah, um, uh, the only thing you want is on that right side, uh, the radio, you probably want to set to about 150 feet. So that is pretty much set from there. Do I need to worry about barometric pressure? Uh, no, because if you set the borrow, I believe it gets rid of the radio. The borrow is going to be three zero zero nine. Or if you want to try entering that in, I think it gets rid of your radio setting. I'm better off with the radio setting. <laughs> Yeah, because to my knowledge, radio is going to be what your minimums are, so uh, visibility when we left Phoenix was fine, but that's just going to be like, you know, if you're 150 feet above the ground and you cannot see the runway, then abort the landing. Does it, it looks like you're uh, no longer following the flight plan. It appears so. That heading knob, it looks like you got a heading set. Pu uh, push that guy in. Here's where you catch up, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and pass on the inside. It looks like you're uh, yeah continuing to hold heading 257. Yeah, I've got that fixed. I guess when I put it, got rid of the discontinuity, or when I was doing something in the other, uh, in the, one of the other phases, it it jammed it up. I guess but it set it back to a heading. I got you. Computers are stupid. Hopefully, it doesn't try to fly backwards. <laughs> I've had that happen a few times in approach. No, the computer's stupid. It just figures, well, while you're trying to figure out what you're going to do, I'm going to go straight. I mean, it's better than it trying to just fly its own course, you know. It's like, it, since it wasn't giving it an input, it'll just do the last thing you told it to do. Just continue maintaining straight ahead. Okay, looks like you're on course now. Yeah. At least now I know that after I finish court, you know, messing around with the course settings and whatnot, I gotta go back and put back on autopilot, or at least full auto. Yeah, what we're currently flying right now would be the equivalent of uh, having LNAV and VNAV both engaged on a Boeing aircraft. Yeah, you're off my tail probably about eight miles. I don't have those numbers come up, so I'm sitting here looking for your uh, your contrails out there. Yeah, you're seven two point two nautical miles. I'm probably about your twelve thirty or one o'clock. I got you on TCAS, so I know where your plane's supposed to be. I just don't actually see you out the window.
Yeah, my TCAS actually shows me shows you uh, at ten miles back. We're pretty pretty close to it. Copy that. We're gonna go ahead and take her on up to thirty thousand feet. So even number flight levels go west, odd numbers go east, correct? Correct. Aerosoft A319. Actually, we're flying a pair of them. Let's see if I can load up behind me here. And I will show you the other aircraft that I'm flying with, which is another streamer of Furbis. There he is right there. In the other airbus, he's in the 321, and I'm in the 319. Yeah, the thing you were in the uh, 321 and not the 319, eh? No, I'm in the 319 also. Oh, it's coming up, and here is 321 when it shows you. Let me see what I entered in. <laughs> That's one way to lose ground is to pause the game. <laughs> or pause the simulator. I gotta get oh. out of that habit. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I disconnected real quick so I might drop off radar. Well, I know you switched you switched out the options or something like that because it just immediately dropped you back. I just uh, I disconnected from VATSIM from V Pilot and I wanted to uh, confirm that I did type in uh, Alpha three one nine and yeah I typed in A three nineteen. Yeah. Okay. Well, FSX is showing you is is a three twenty one. That could be because I don't have any traffic things installed, so it didn't it didn't recognize the 319. Oh, you don't have that IVAO model matching set installed? Not yet. No, I was trying. I, I'm adding little bits at a time because I don't want to see this thing, you know, jump down to about 17 frames a second and kill me. I gotcha. I gotcha. I got too used to playing World of Warcraft at anywhere from 60 to 120 frames a second. Yeah, that's definitely something you're not going to be used to on a uh, <laughs> flight sim. Well, I'm, I'm getting used to it. At least I know where to watch for it. I mean, if you're on the ground, that tends to be a bigger problem. Or highly congested sure. areas. Like, I noticed it coming around when I, when I flew by uh, Los Angeles. I just I noticed this, a sudden drop in rate. Um, if I'm on the runway in a busy airport, I drop probably drop to about 12 to 15 frames a second. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I can I can manage temporary drops for little bits. It's when it goes crazy and drops to like four or five frames a second, you don't know why. So 
apparently I'm 30 mi 31 miles from uh, top of the sand. That sounds about right. <laughs> oh boy, Furbis. Are you gonna please with that little thing? Myself. Yeah, my plan G is like showing you right on my ass now. Yeah, this uh this airbus actually started hauling out. <laughs> Yeah, 1.4 nautical miles off of me, and you're at, I think, uh, about 30,000 feet? Yeah, I took her up two more thousand feet for some separation. We got a ground speed of 452 knots up here and a true air speed of 471. Oh, well, you're going to be because I'm at 392 ground and 413 air. This one's hauling ass then. Um, <laughs> on the bright side though, we're probably both going to start descending about the same time, so <clears throat> we uh, shouldn't have any problems with the altitude separation. Well, I'm not worried about that. As long as I'm going slower than you, at least I know I can get stopped. Yeah, I'm about a 10 minute drive from Pearson International, so I get all the, uh, the, all the customs and whatnot that, that fly, go through the area and there's constantly airplanes flying over the house. That's cool, so you, I mean, uh, Toronto's got some really impressive aircraft that fly in there. Oh yeah. Get a lot of international flights. It's, I guess it'd be pretty similar to LA though. Huh. Oh yeah, we get a whole multitude of, um, colorful planes coming in here. Yeah, some of the Air France jets, uh, some of the, the KLM jets, the, some massive things that go through it. And I think the good thing about Toronto, the, the airfield at Toronto is um, there's streets all around it and you can kind of see where all the hangars are. May not necessarily see all the planes, but all the, the uh, like the, the the FedEx delivery stuff is off at the oh god the northwest end. So you can see all the uh, the 777s, the MD11s, and stuff like that. Uh, you guys get the uh, Emirates 380, don't you? The Emirates, and I believe I I want to say Lufthansa sends theirs to uh, Pearson as well. They do. Uh, we are beginning Sent our descent. Yeah, here at LAX, we get, uh, Jesus, I think we get about eight of them. We get KLM, we get Lufthansa, we get Air France, we get Emir uh, Emirates, we get British Airways, Korean, China, Southern, China Eastern. I always get those two mixed up. Checked. Uh, and one, one of those Chinese Airbus A380s as well. 
Okay, so now that it says initiate descent. Now that it says initiate descent, you go to your flight plan page on your FMC, you look for your first magenta uh, asterisk, and you program your um, autopilot panel to go down to that altitude. All right. Initiating descent. FMA check. Radar tilt. Yeah, the FedEx planes are Set. are massive. Yeah, I'll try and get you a picture of the uh, the FedEx yard out out just south of me. Like they've got, they pretty much got their own private runway, and then there's about it's three or four seven seventy sevens, and a couple of MD elevens that they're out there. I think they got a seven forty seven as well. See, yeah, I'm known around Twitch for flying that FedEx triple uh, seven Panda jet. I've never even once seen a FedEx seven seven seven. I mean, and I see the MD tens, I see the DC tens, and I see the MD elevens out here. And God, all their Airbuses. I see those out here all the time, but I've never once seen one of the FedEx triple seven. Oh, but it's four minute, four minute drive from from where where I work, where I see it. So I can drop by there. I'll I'll get I'll snap up a picture too. I'll I'll put them on stream or I'll post them on the uh, Facebook page. Cool, man. Thank you. Yeah, now you're 2.6 nautical miles ahead. I'm ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, you're at my 12 o'clock at uh, 25,000 feet. Wow. Speed up a little bit. Oh no! You l let the uh, let the autopilot maintain your speed and altitude. I want to make sure we can get this thing to do a a textbook category three auto land. I think that's the other Airbus that I forgot. Air France. Air France sends their A380 out to Los Angeles as well. Uh, did you happen to spot the uh, British Airways 01 on descent? Um, are we talking in the sim or in real life? That's him. Uh, negative. Like I spotted you talking the uh, out of Flight level 240, but there was one just before you that said descent commenced. Oh, look at that. I thought that was you. Nope, not me. Oh, that's going to be interesting. I see him over there. BAW. BAW is his British Airways. British Airways, he's fine. A 737-800? Custom paint, I guess. <laughs> and there's someone leaving runway 8. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so as you get close, for me, it looks like the first first fix that I was going to is 18,000 feet. Once you get close at 18,000 feet, you're going to have to program her for the next fix. Yeah, which is showing me uh, 
speed 250 is 17,000. Phoenix got busy out of nowhere. Well, it's handy. It's not as busy as LA. Transition altitude. Oh man, I do love my home airport. Barrow reference set. Alright, jump on that flight plan page on your FMC and make sure you don't have any route discontinuities. This is where it gets all panicky, right? Where it can get panicky. <laughs> that was up in the beginning. Yeah, I do. You get that one right after manual. I don't know if it'll let you delete that one. Yeah, I deleted it after I deleted manual. Okay, so... I was supposed to leave that in, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, it just means that this is supposed to be a vectored approach. You, you follow that, uh, that uh, star, and then the controller will tell you to turn to a certain heading to intercept the ILS. That's all. Ah. Uh. That was just a bit too wordy. <laughs> I caught that one late. What was that? Well, I should have probably about 25 miles back, headed back down to 13, and I was still stuck at 18. I'm descending from uh, flight 170 right now. Down to 1 1000? Yeah. Just uh, take it, take your altitude bug and take it down to 7000 feet. It should still obey all the, the speed and altitude restrictions on the way down.
Yeah, I can see it below me at my 12 o'clock. After that, I got my altimeter set 1019. And yeah, it's obeying all the restrictions on the way down. He basically just took, got me to skip ahead because I missed one, right? That's what you were thinking? Uh, negative. I, I'm just giving, because it looks like a couple of fixes it wants you to hold 7,000 feet. So I just said, screw it, take it down to 7,000 feet, and on the way down, all those other fixes, it'll abide by your speed and altitude restrictions on the way down. Ah, okay, gotcha. So it would have been, it would have been an adjustment depending on... on what the altitude was going downwards. Exactly. I mean, it looks like according to this, you could set it all the way down to about 4,000 feet, maybe 3,000 if you're feeling ballsy, and uh, it'll still obey the altitude restrictions. And then at 3,000 feet, it'll intercept the ILS. Should I do the uh, descent checklist? Or no, I guess the approach starts uh, in four yeah. miles, yeah. Exactly. So I do that checklist before I hit approach, correct? Uh, the descent checklist starts before you start your top of descent, and then the approach checklist starts, I can't remember, X amount of miles out of the airport, 15, 20 miles before the airport. So I'm best to do it now, as soon as it pops up. <laughs> I've got the field off my port side, so I want to say yes. Approach checklist. Beacon status. Checked. Sliding tables. Stowed. Stowed. Cabin signs. Checked. Nav currency. Checked. Bearer reference. Oh man, we're Checked. gonna be getting here the exact one, same zero, time. One, zero, one, nine. Checked. Checklist complete. Flight attendants, prepare for landing. You say it's pretty quiet, but I mean there was there was two aircraft out here. Yeah, now. <laughs> Yeah, with your altitude bug, go ahead and set that for 4,000 feet and press that bad boy in, and uh, it'll it'll follow the restrictions down. All right, it's been preset. I just had to hit the button. And then the knob that was on ARC, um, I would suggest throwing your, her either on NAV or ILS, and then watching that magenta triangle.
So this will automatically switch to localizer now that it's in landing mode, right? Or landing stage, or whatever you want to call it. I don't think so. Oh, I lied. It's automatically in approach phase. Okay, it looks like my plane is intercepting the uh, ILS. It's it's making its turn, so I want to go ahead and press that localizer button. I usually skip that out of being lazy, and uh, I just went ahead and pressed the uh, approach. Here comes the big turn. Alright, once you start that turn, your magenta triangle should be right there in the center. You can go ahead and press that approach button and she should inter intercept the ILS. comes by all right it's starting to move over so it's hit center I hit a poach right yeah your plane's too high uh press that approach button No. All right, maintain I'm, that altitude. I'm, I'm, okay. What, 4,000? Yeah, I, I wanted to do an auto land. Maintain 4,000 feet and uh, maintain current heading. Just go ahead and, uh, I want to say, like, take over the entire aircraft. Uh, for your speed, go ahead and pull that knob out, and for the heading, pull that knob out also. And just make sure it stays on whatever the runway heading is, zero, 08, zero. Yeah, I completely botched that up.
because I'm going too fast for having flaps. Okay, take those flaps out. Remember, uh, speed limit restriction in the United States is 250 knots under 10,000 feet. So try to keep her at about 240 knots, maybe 230 knots, um, with maybe flaps one at the most if you need it. But I think you can do that with uh, flaps closed. Yeah, I'm holding with flaps closed right now anyways. I just set it to, to 202 anyways. Okay, copy that. Get on that spot, or excuse me. I'm gonna get on Plan G, and I'll uh, I'll see exactly where your plane's at. Right now, about uh, ten miles east of the uh, airstrip. Fantastic, I got visual on you. Go ahead and turn heading uh, 360, or 000. zero, zero, zero. Uh. We'll get this damn Airbus down. Look, uh, you call the shots, not the plane. going to do here is fly a simple traffic pattern just like you would in a regular old Cessna or whatnot. We're just going to let the autopilot do the actual uh, heading and altitude holds for us. So it's still holding 4,000 feet, right? Yeah. Alright, I'm watching this British Airways plane come in uh, right now. I'm going to try to time it so that uh, you don't accidentally come in at the same time as that guy. Well, by the looks of it, he's the other side of the airport anyways. Oh, I see what you're saying, so I don't run into him or go in too close. Exactly, because he's still taking runway 8. Hopefully these mountains are not at uh, 4,000 feet. I don't think so. Oh yeah, 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 you're fine, you're fine. Right, because Vegas is tricky for that. Yeah, Vegas does get a little tricky. Alright, you're pretty far out. Let's go ahead and have you turn uh, heading 270.
So I'm guessing you, you're flying me back to pretty close to where we were before, before we made the, uh, the approach turn. Yep, I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm, I, I'll just tell you where to turn and what altitude to maintain instead of uh, doing it by the autopilot. <coughs> well, I find with the autopilot, it just swings you around for a second attempt, and if you're too high, you're still too high. And I screwed up, but I didn't call my missed approach. Yeah, no big deal. Usually those are what you don't want to call anyone. <laughs> I've got a bunch of people watching the stream that already know. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's no secrets on the internet. Yeah, there is no secrets, but it's kind of funny to get... Because when I started up the screen, stream, there's guys who are like, oh, pull it about 31,000 feet and do a flat spin down. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty typical requests. I can't remember who I was watching. It was, it was with Bellins, and they were. Uh, it was Squirrel. That's who it was. And uh, he was doing some pretty amazing stuff with the aircraft. But he, he he said it right. He says it's when you can almost crash, but not crash. That's when it's cool. <laughs> What's the pain in the ass? Down part and shut down. What's the pain in the ass when it, when you crash? You lose you lose add-ons. Shit. All right, Rouge 187, turn left, heading, uh, let's go 210. Oh, that's Rouge 1187, excuse me. Uh, Rouge 1187210. I see what you're doing. I guess uh, somewhere around the uh, the main road is where you're going to tell me to throw it back into autopilot and go into uh, localizer. Uh, you've got the autopilot on right now, correct? Yeah, yeah. No, I meant as far as pushing the dials back in. Uh, no, we're not going to give the plane control back at all anymore. I always like manual better than automatic anyways. I'm watching this British Airways plane come in right now. He's almost down on runway 8, so we are clear. Verify one thing. Look down at your FMC and go to that radio nav page. On the left hand side for ILS frequency and course, does it say anything? It doesn't say anything for course. Really? Frequency 115.6 and 114.8. Oh, so ILS frequency 111.75, but nothing before it. 
course zero seven zero. Okay, um, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and type in zero seven eight, and then uh, the little backslash, and then one 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 seven five. Damn, that actually was a British Airways 737. It's telling me bad format. Oh, I see why. Okay, all you do is enter in the frequency. It already said you just 11175 and then the one, uh, what, L4, the one right below it, that's where you type in your course. All right, it's there. Okay, all right, stand by. You are still at 4,000 feet, correct? Yep, 4,000 feet, uh, 224 ground speed, 223 air. Copy that, uh, stand by. All right, let's go ahead, uh, Rouge 1178, turn left heading, uh, 130 and report established on ILS runway 08. Once you turn, if you dial in one, if you dial in 130 and have it turn left, you should press that approach button and it should actually establish itself on the ILS. All right, one three zero for one one seven five. So, do I call approach or when I hit approach? Um, appro that approach button has nothing to do with calling anybody. That's that's the plane oh. actually establishing itself on the ILS. The, the actual glide slope. Um, as far as approach goes, like as far as what talking on that zip. Well, you said to notify once uh, localizer is established, right? Oh, yeah. So if uh, if they tell you, let's say you know we're in the same scenario, and um, I don't know, approach tells you turn left heading one three zero cleared. Cleared ILS runway uh, right, so 08 report established. Once that thing's lined up with the ILS and coming straight in, then you say on you know establish on the localizer, establish on ILS. All right, so let's get that gear down and start slowing this damn thing down. Uh, dial that gear speed down. bug down to like 160 knots. Get the flaps down to. Uh, Maybe like flaps three. I can't see because you got your flight board there, but there's going to be a little green F, and that F is going to tell you what uh, your landing speed should be. So you just dial the speed bug down to where the F's at, and then that's what it should be at full flaps. It looks like your throttle detent's not in the CL because the, the auto throttle's not on. I don't think it liked that it had flaps on full. <laughs> Too fast. Too fast. Approaching. Okay, full Zero. speed brake. If, if it actually slows down to 150 knots, you might be able to get it on the ground, but it, it looks like it's floating. I 
they take a chance. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's set it up for a good auto land, you know, just for the hell of it. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and go around. You serious? This I can land this. Minimum. All right, go for it. One hundred. Landing checklist. Yeah, I know. That should make it down. Down and locked. Three greens. Spoilers. Set. Caution. Taxiway. Caution. Taxiway. On Go around. Yeah, that's another missed approach. I thought you were actually going to get through with it. <laughs> right. Yeah, and then suddenly uh, it just it pulled up on me. Oh, okay, then it didn't like the way it was set up. Alright, a Rouge 1178, I guess. Uh, climb and maintain 4,000 feet. Uh, fly runway heading of, what, 078? Is there any way to tell it that you can just force it that it can take the landing? Yeah, turn the autopilot off. Flap zero. Speedtech flap zero. So I've, I've got to set something up on my little switch panel here for a quick key rather than have to shift over and hit it. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, let's get those flaps thrust. Flaps contained. The get the flaps clean and have it maintained 200 knots. Check normal. Spoilers. Disarmed. Flaps. Check retracted. Landing gear. Gear up. Lights off. Autopilot on. Checked. Hex. Helps if I turn on autopilot. Off. That does help, yeah. Set. Barrow reference set and cross checked. It's in the it's in the climb thrust detent, right? Well, not anymore. <laughs> I keep I've got this damn thirty second twitch uh, stream lag, so. <laughs> I was telling me that it wants to sit and climb. Still gotta get those flaps clean. Uh, retract the flaps completely. This is where I start to have problems. Right, no worries, no worries. Um, okay, so you're currently heading uh, 078 or something like that. Go ahead and turn left heading, uh, let's do uh, 350. And then uh, maintain 4,000 feet. Why is it trying to climb up? See, it's going too fast. I don't know if that's a problem with with the steam position or is just the way I fly it. Just it suddenly just picks up speed and just goes crazy. Keeps asking me to set throttle lever into climb, and as soon as I do that, it just it goes crazy with the uh, with the speed. Take the throttle all the way back to idle, it should kick auto throttle off, then bring it back to the climb detent, and then uh, I think auto throttle might actually already uh, self-engage. Yeah, it disengaged. <laughs> oh, thank you, Kanai.
I got your flight board in the way, but uh, what's your current speed? It looks like you're maintaining 4,000 feet. That's good. You're maintaining 350. That's good, but I can't see speed. Uh, trying to drop below to two, oh, 190, but I'm uh, 280 right now. Yeah, and it looks like auto throttle is still off. Yeah, it's off. Go ahead, go ahead and turn auto throttle back on. And then put it back in decline? <laughs> yeah, and I hope it doesn't try to freaking fly off like a bat out of hell again. <laughs> <clears throat> it seemed to work. So it's kind of like one of those resets that you had to do. Yeah, it just needed to reset itself by just going ahead and disengaging auto throttle completely by bringing it back to idle and then going back to the climb detent. Alright, Rouge 1178, turn left heading 250. All right, eleven seventy eight left two five zero. Yeah, this time it's going to land on the runway or land all over the runway. <laughs> One or the other, it looks like uh, that <laughs> Speedbird is going to take back off and go to Los Angeles, so uh, I wonder what runway he's taking. Is he in Phoenix right now? Yeah, the Speedbird plane just landed, that British Airways 737-800. Oh, okay, I didn't see anything on bad soon about him leaving. That was the British Airways zero one. No, uh, yeah, he he refiled his flight plan. Now he's going to Los Angeles. Oh, lucky ass. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just holding it 190 just for the sake of, until we get a little bit past the airport and I'll drop it down to 160. Uh, maintain 190, that, that's fine. You do see that mountain ahead, right? Uh, <laughs> I do. <laughs> that's... <sighs> I would say just fly around it, but try to maintain about 4,000 feet. <laughs> we cleared it. Not by much, but we cleared it. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. <laughs> uh oh. What happened? I didn't have my swap code set. Is there a controller on? I think it was a supervisor, but how do you set it to SWAT code Charlie? Oh, on vPilot, where it says mode C, press that. Okay, now it's turned on, I'm fine, right? The supervisor said something to you? MF super...
I heard that beep and I immediately freaked out. I was like, ah, what am I doing wrong? Yeah, it was MF underscore SUP. Yeah, SUP, those are, those are the bad ones. <laughs> well, I mean, all he said was, uh, while in the air, you should always have your squat code Charlie, or have it on, and you may have forgotten it. That's why I'm letting you know, enjoy your flight. Oh, okay, okay. When I filed the flight plan, plan I just put second flight. I figured, no worries. I'm sure, yeah. uh, like he assumed, like you maybe just forgot. I forget that stupid mode Charlie all the time. So supervisor's watching me. <laughs> maybe he's yeah, watching the no channel. Pressure. Eh, possibly. Man, not that it matters. The more the more shit people give me, the more I'm gonna find out and learn quicker. That is the uh, idea behind that sim, is so that you can learn <clears throat> how to uh, you know do all this stuff. It's not like, hey, it was trial and error for me. I screwed up a lot. Alright, well, uh, one more time, let's go ahead and look back down at uh, your FMC and verify that the ILS frequency is still 11175 and course is 078. Confirmed. Alright, that is a good thing. Let's go ahead and uh, let's turn to a heading of... Um, I guess Rouge 1178 turn left heading uh, 190 to send and maintain 3,000 feet. 190 to send and maintain 3,000. This is difficult using Plan G. I find it's wrong or it's behind. I've got it set to refresh every uh, two seconds, though. So I mean, it's pretty much it's pretty right. comes the fun part. Go ahead and take that speed bug and turn that thing down to about uh, 175 and go flaps 1. We're going to do a slightly shorter approach this time. Okay, so spoilers are armed, and it's telling me flaps full when the time comes. Landing gear is down. Landing gear's still down, okay. A good way for me to keep slow. <laughs> that will definitely help main, uh, maintain a slower speed, yes. So it was intentional, it's not like I forgot. I actually don't even see on yours where the landing speed is supposed to be. It doesn't appear to be set, does it? <coughs> no, it doesn't. I wonder if everything in the approach uh, phase just got erased. Let's see you got time. Peek down at the FMC and see what's going on on the approach the approach page.
You're gonna have to tell that British Airways plane that you're coming in on runway 8, because it looks like you want to depart runway 26. That's the same runway you're gonna land on. <laughs> okay. Um. Alright, screw it. We're running out of time. Hey, uh, turn, uh, turn left heading, uh, I don't know, uh, 110 and then intercept the ILS for runway 08. He's still in taxi, so we might have time. So how do I, I kind of mention this, eh? Phoenix traffic, I guess so. Yeah, and then press that approach button so it intercepts the ILS. No, I meant on that sim. Yeah, to say, uh, you know, Phoenix traffic inbound ILS runway 08. Eight, Now it's swerving all over the place trying to line up. Yeah, it just took a wide. That, that's no big deal. It's uh, still lower than the ILS. So go ahead and turn that speed bug down to maybe about 160, I don't know, say 160, 160 knots and maybe go flaps three. I told the speed bird flight to stand by that you're in now. Flaps. Flaps. Approaching zero eight. Okay, so far so good. Alright, speed brakes armed, auto brakes armed, everything's looking good, and uh, that speed bug's going down. If, if you can, <clears throat> set flaps full, and hopefully it has just a little bit of a nose up attitude, and uh, she should uh, sail right in. 400. Apparently my gear came back up. <laughs> oh, that's bad. You want that down. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Five. Retard. Long landing. Long landing. I pulled up. That was my problem. Oh, you pulled up? Yeah. Yeah, stupid me. I had it and I pulled up. But that wasn't bad. I might have almost done it on that second drop. <laughs> I just got after that twitch lag. It's back in the air. <laughs> yeah, I should have just let it go and stop. <laughs> oh man, that's too bad. <laughs> it was a fast landing though. 160 is too fast. It's got to come down to about 145, I think. Yeah, I don't. I didn't remember what the landing speed was for my aircraft. I think mine was heavier with a full load of uh, passengers and all the cargo. I think it came in at about 152. Yeah, me being smaller and lighter, I think it would probably be a 125 to 140 range. <laughs> I tend to come in too hot, so maybe I should just set it lower. But thank you for the help, Furbis. I, I learned a lot. Oh, no worries, man. I gotta get up for work in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. This is one of those things. I mean, it, I had the opportunity. I learned from it. Instead of constantly doing something wrong and frustrating myself I, because I don't know any better, you know, take a flight with someone that doing the same thing in the same aircraft, I, I figure out what, where to look and how things are set up. 
They, they say old habits are hard to break. I mean, you just have to pretty much trust your equipment. If you've got everything set up correctly, if you know what your landing speed is and you've got full flaps, the thing should fly in by itself. Yeah, I didn't trust the aircraft. <laughs> But I mean, uh, I should be back from work at a decent hour tomorrow. I'm on Pacific time, so right now it's 3 in the morning. Um, I should be back, mm, say like 6, 7 o'clock p.m. my time tomorrow. So if you want to do some more, a little short flight for uh, some learning, ILS setups, all that good stuff, let me know. Yeah, that's about 9 or 10 o'clock my time, so I'll be back by then. Alright, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, for, <clears throat> for those who are watching, thanks for coming out. <laughs> yeah, I know, you got to put faith in the airplane. I don't trust the airplane. I don't know what it is. I just got to let it crash on its own once or twice and see how it goes. I think that's what it is. I mean, in my highlights, I've, I've got a landing I pulled out, but it was full manual. I can, I can land it manual if I have to. Yeah, I do. Once I trust the equipment, I'll do better. It's just, I knew, I thought it was too fast. It came down, it came down smooth. I wish I had caught the, uh, caught the replay before it crashed. Cause it, it landed, perfect three point landing. <laughs> it hit the ground and then I just I pulled it back up. Once I get one or two landings that I, I get a hold of, then I'm, I'll know what to watch for. It's just I go into panic mode. I see the runway and I see it swerving back and forth. And I figure, no, this isn't going to happen. I got to fix this. But, uh, yeah, in case you missed it, purpose will be on tomorrow night. Um, I'll try and get on about the same time. Maybe we'll do a bit more learning curve stuff. I'm, sure I'm not the only one that's new to this. Oh, I'll, I'm hoping I'll get it. <laughs> I, well, thank you, Furbus. I understand a lot of the concepts. It's just the terminology and whatnot. Once I get into the habit of how to deal with, you know, I'm learning VAT sim at the same time as the, as the aircraft, so I'll get it. I'll keep trying. I'm still rather impressed that we had the entire flight group on my stream at one time. <laughs> yeah, telling me how to go, where to go, and how to get there. Right? It's not. It's not the problem with with the ATC. I, it was. I'm trying to listen to him, and then vent would kick up. So that's the one one challenge I'm gonna have to get learn to do. Where maybe I'll have a mute button for some kind of mute mute hotkey for for vent, so I can just turn off the, the audio, so I can listen to that sim. All right, time for me to get some sleep. I guess everyone else's day is just starting. Mine's, mine's about to end, so uh, hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, sorry I didn't pay attention to chat as much as I, I probably should have, but there was a lot to learn. So hopefully you picked up on a few things, that, and I'll be back tomorrow night sometime around uh, about 9 Eastern or uh, 6 Pacific, somewhere in that range. All right, have a good night, guys.